Greetings, welcome to the channel. All of you who have newly subscribed, thank you. This channel is a channel of truth. And I am people. My goal is to reach people. And this is the house of David. And we have the famous saying, the house of David is Islam. And the house of Saul is Christianity. Today, I want to spend time reaching out to our people. Okay. In the Israelite camps um, who identify as Israelites. Now, I'll tell you the truth. Do I believe that the Israelites were black? Yes, I do. Damn. According to the Hadiths, Jesus was black and Moses was black. Okay, so I don't disagree with that. Okay, but however, according to the Bible, the kingdom would be taken from Israel and given to another nation. And right now, who has the kingdom? Esau. But you guys in these Israelite camps fail to realize that Esau is going into Saul, the Christians, the house of Saul. OK, the Christians have the kingdom today. That's absolute truth. OK, but we believe in the house of David that the kingdom will be taken from the Christians and the real saints will possess the kingdom. Now, you saying the saints ain't Muslims. I know that's what you're saying in the back of your head. But go to Deuteronomy 33 and 2. That's the first time saints was mentioned. Paul stole that because he believed that he was the last and final messenger. A lot of you have no clue about what's in your own Bible. The Christian is guilty of not studying his own Bible. Now, John was asked if he was Elijah. He was asked if he was Christ, but he also he was asked, asked if he was that prophet that's going into the Gentile messenger. Paul believed he was the Gentile messenger. That's why he called his church saints. That's why he was in Arabia. That's why he was talking about a covenant y'all don't talk about with Ishmael and Isaac. And he believed that he was the Ishmael who persecuted Isaac going into Esau, which is going into Jesus. He believed that he was the least of all of the messengers because he believed that he was the greatest. Jesus said, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John the Baptist. And we know that according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul says not only that he was least, okay, meaning he was the greatest, but he also said that he was last of all seen of Christ. He believed that he was the last and final messenger. Now, I want to talk about the best example for the black man. Now, the best religion for the black man it's Islam, hands down, because the best example of the black man is Malcolm X. Now, let's think about that. If the best example of the black man was Malcolm X, and he followed after the best example of all men, the prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon them both. Then that's telling you, my brothers, the best religion for all men is the religion of Islam. Now, you got to get rid of your racism. OK, you have failed if you are in the Israelite camp to identify Paul as the wolf in sheep clothing that Jesus warned about that will come out of the desert. OK, that was none other than Paul. OK, he was the reason why Jesus had Joseph present during his birth, because Joseph is the father of Jesus, just like Paul is the father of the Christian church. OK, 
Paul was the Joseph of Jesus. And Jesus was born supernaturally, my brother, which is true proof that Paul or the apostate or the self-proclaimed apostle Paul is not going to be his father, okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescued Jesus, okay? And Jesus will clear himself from those charges. He's going to break that yoke. Just like Esau, it was prophesied by Isaac that he would break the yoke from off of his neck from his brother. Okay, it's the same thing with the prophet Esau. He was born into a religion that Paul was trying to push upon him. Okay, and the prophet Isa is going to break free from that yoke. And the first thing he's going to do is he's going to kill that Christian church. This is the reason why Esau wanted to kill Jacob. It was much deeper than him stealing his birthright. This is going into what Paul did. Paul stole the birthright of Christ. Okay, he was the Jacob grabbing a hold of his brother Esau or Isa. That's Jesus in Arabic. He was grabbing a hold of his brother's heel. That's why Jesus said if he's doing miracles, okay, he's the false Christ. He's coming out of the desert. All these things point to Paul, and yet the Christians have no idea. Let alone you brothers in the Israelite camps, okay? Y'all have to deal with reality. Nathaniel is not the best example of a black man. The best example of a black man was Malcolm X, okay? That's proof that the best religion for the black man is Islam. And that's just the truth. That is just the truth. Now, all y'all want to do is talk about, but the covenant was in Isaac. But the covenant was in Isaac. But the covenant was in Isaac. Why you think God said the covenant was in Isaac? Because Paul stole the covenant that was in Ishmael. In Galatians chapter 4, Paul talks about Abraham having two sons. When we know Abraham had eight sons, what's so important about Ishmael and Isaac? Because God said he would make Ishmael a great nation. But he said, but my covenant is going to be with Isaac. Why did he say that? Because he knew there was coming a thief. Who would steal the covenant of Ishmael. And Paul identified himself as Ishmael. When he was persecuting the church. When he was persecuting Isaac or Esau. Okay. And so God had to say okay. I'll make Saul a great nation. But you know what? My covenant is going to be in Isaac or Esau. And Esau is going into Jesus being the Messiah of another nation. Just like Joseph. He was an Egyptian. He was the savior of Egypt. Not of Israel. Israel had to come to Egypt and get saved. Okay, Joseph was the Messiah of another people and of another nation and of another religion. Remember, Joseph swore by the life of Pharaoh. He didn't swear by the life of God. And he used divination. That's why he planted the cup in Benjamin's sack, pointing to Paul from the tribe of Benjamin, whose symbol is the wolf, who will be using witchcraft divination in the future. This is why we have a story of King Saul practicing divination. Okay, he brought up a witch to bring up a dead prophet. And that's exactly what the witches or the Christians is doing in the New Testament. Okay, they are bringing up a so-called dead prophet. King Saul and the Saul of the New Testament is one in the same. And so when he cursed Islam in Galatians 1 and 8, that was proof he was using divination. You got to go to 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 9. The Bible says, and saw I David. Let that sink in. Saw I David. Saw, saw David. See, saw. He's seen him. He's seen the prophet Muhammad showing up in Mecca in 629 CE with the 10,000. With the 10,000. Okay. And the women seen this. They said, Saul, you get a thousand. But David, the beloved, he's getting 
the ten thousand. And this is sing and song of Solomon, song of solo man, one man. In chapter 5, verse 10, where it says he's chief of the ten thousand. Talks about his skin color. White and ruddy. That's white and reddish. That's exactly describing the prophet. Talks about the shape of his nose. Talks about his hair color. And then it mentions his name in verse 16. In the original Hebrew translation, it renders Muhammadim with the plural of respect. He was called beloved. Beloved means David. This is the David. The prophet Muhammad has been the David this whole time. Y'all just can't see because y'all don't teach types and shadows. My brothers, this is what made Saul jealous. This is what made the Saul of the New Testament jealous. And he cursed Islam through the power of divination. And that's why Joseph put that cup in Benjamin's sack. Keep in mind, the sack had corn. Okay, God was been trying to show me this a while ago. The first time I was eating corn in a cup, corn in a cup years ago, there was something to that corn in a cup. That corn in the cup is going into Saul's divination, his cup of divination, cursing the Quran or the corn. Get it, corn, Quran. This is why when you go to first Corinthians, see corn, Corinthians, corn. Okay, God has exposed Paul for trying to curse the Quran. Okay, that's why Peter doesn't have the cup. James don't have the cup. Okay, Paul was the man whom lifted up his heel against the prophet Isa. He was the one who betrayed Jesus. Why? Because he had the cup. He had the cup of divination. And that is proof that Christianity is witchcraft. It's nothing but divination. And you supposed to be keeping the commandments, black man. You say you keeping the commandments. Well, go to Exodus chapter 22 and verse 18. It says, suffer not a witch to live. Okay. And the prophet Muhammad gave us the right by Allah's leave, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to jihad. And there's coming a day. When we will barbecue preachers and we will kill off all of the non-believers. Okay. This is the reason why the Christians suffered so much. It was witchcraft. It was nothing but witchcraft. That's all it is. Okay. And the God or the dog, get it? Dog, God of the New Testament is the wolf in sheep clothing. It's Paul. And y'all fail to decode that thing. Right there in the New Testament. Y'all eating right now. The bread of the Pharisees. That's the teaching that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. This is the very reason why they was not supposed to eat any bread with yeast in it during the killing of the firstborn, my brother. So there's so much false teaching in these Israelite camps. And I dare you to get one of your camp leaders. They don't even have to be the bishop. They don't even have to be a captain. Just let them be an officer. They hiding. They do not want to deal with me. They don't. Because the stuff I'm bringing out is in the Bible. And I've been studying it for 20 years. And I'm going to show your mans in them how much they don't know the Bible. And so we have to wake our people up by bringing out the true gospel. The true gospel is exposing Paul as the wolf in sheep clothing. That's the real gospel. It's about the other son, Benjamin, as it is written. Jacob had two beloved sons, Joseph, the one who was falsely murdered, who was a picture of Christ. But there was another son who was the top favorite, and it is Benjamin. Let me tell you something. Benjamin is the devil's favorite son okay and he's got that thing so zip tight that many of you do not know what really happened to christ and you don't really know who the enemy of god is but it is written judah's hands shall be in the neck of his enemies just like judith her hands was in the neck of hollow fernandez hollow fernandez is going into potiphar is going into pharaoh is going into the man with the fur and that is paul the true enemy of god 
Okay, this is the gospel right here that has to go out into all the world. So stop playing and get on board. Stop playing. And I got so many videos out that you can't steal it because I know black people. We love stealing. We love stealing. This revelation came out of this house. This ministry is the man. Okay, who drew his bow at random. And killed the king of Israel. Ahab. Okay. That's going into Paul. Okay. Jehoshaphat was not the king of Israel. Okay. Jesus is not the king of the church. Paul is. Okay. Paul is the Ahab. Paul is the true king of Israel. He's making it seem like Jesus is the king, but no, Paul is the king. The same story is seen with Ahab and Jehoshaphat. He said, you know what? You put on your royal robes. You put on your royal robes and I'm going to go in disguised. OK, this is the true picture of Jesus and Paul. OK, Jesus ain't nothing but the Joseph who was behind Pharaoh. OK, who is that? Paul. OK, y'all failed to decode the Bible. So we're trying to set up some debates. We're trying to set up some discussions in peace. That way we can go over the scriptures. Let's deal with the meat of the matter and let's deal with the elephant in the room. And that is Paul. OK, we will not rise as a people and do anything by disrespecting the prophet Muhammad. And in IUIC, they are teaching the young men. To say Islam is garbage, okay, they have that written down in their list of precepts, okay? We are not going to rise up by cursing the nation of Islam, okay? I'm trying to tell you this is the truth, okay? If you in that cult, you need to run out of there. You need to run up out of there, okay? The truth of the matter is, our brothers, the Arabs, have the truth. You need to pick a side. As much as you say you hate the white man, you was on Esau's side because you on Paul's side because you on Saul's side. And today, the white man has the kingdom, and that's only because he has Christianity. Okay? He stole Jesus, painted him white, made him a god. Do you think he's going to convert? The only way we can rise up is if we join with our brothers, the Arabs. They have the truth, okay? They know the truth about what really happened to Jesus, okay? So, brothers, stop being racist. Swallow your pride. Malcolm X connected with the Arabs. Even Kali Muhammad. He didn't get along with all of them, but he did have respect for Palestine. So, we... My brothers, whether you identify as Israelite or not, okay, that's that's the fake gold. Right now, if you really, really want to study and you really want to find out who is the real Israelite today, it is the Muslim, okay? That's that's God's chosen people today, okay? Regardless what nationality, race, creed, gender, if you are a Muslim, God will give you a Jew or a Christian and will say this is your ransom from the fire so let's stop being racist okay let's stop being robots okay y'all keep talking about these prophecies of israel and of israel and of israel but these israel prophecies is going many different directions okay one minute god is talking about having mercy on israel and one minute he's talking about not having mercy on israel okay israel was a test israel was a metaphor OK, the real Israelite is the Muslim. Wake up. Y'all need to wake up. Y'all holding on to fake gold. OK, y'all tripping about Jesus being black and all of that. That ain't why we got kicked out of Israel. We got kicked out and we lost the kingdom for breaking the commandments. Not because of our skin color, my brother. 
And if you really do want to be against what you call the enemy, you're going to have to join with the nation of Islam. You're going to have to join with your brothers, the Arabians. And I'm not pushing racism or anything like that because we have white people that are Muslim too. We have white girls that are Muslim too. Beautiful people, okay? The truth of the matter is most of the people who do not accept Islam is white. Okay, because they stole Jesus and Esau's pride is not going to allow him to put Jesus on the back burner and receive the truth of another nation, of another skin tone. No, they ain't doing that. They ain't doing that. Okay, so we need to wake up to the truth. And I'm going to tell you again, I'm going to leave you with this quote. The best religion for the black man is going to be Islam. Because the best example of the black man is Malcolm X. And he followed after the best example of all men. And that is the prophet Muhammad. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to pull him away from all that racial pride and that prejudice. And he began to see men as men of God or men of Satan. OK, Malcolm X was a blessing to us if we receive it. OK, Martin Luther King, you know, bless his soul. But he was in the lie. He was in Christianity. OK, the best thing I get from Martin Luther King was how he was reaching out to all nationalities. OK, but Malcolm X began to do that at the end of his life. Plus, he was in the truth. He was in the Quran. <laughs> he was in the corn. OK, he was in the clear book. So wake up and stop being deceived. Black man. OK, it's time for us to live according to what Allah has given us. OK, he's given us the book of guidance. OK, we're going to have to break free from people that don't want to wash up. They don't want to purify themselves, although the God in the Bible wanted the children of Israel to be sanctified, to be washed before he visited them. Same God, OK, you need to wake up. We need to purify. We need to pray. We need to get a hold of that discipline that's in the religion of Islam. I was a Christian for 20 years. I was a Bible teacher for 15 years. OK. I came to Islam with no pressure, no Arab talking to me, none of that. I found Islam from the Bible when I heard about a donkey talking. I read that and read that and read that. But when it dawned on me that a donkey represents an unclean animal, which means a Gentile, I was like, wow, this is a picture of the prophet Muhammad. Only one unclean animal in the Bible that talked. Not a sheep, <laughs> an unclean animal. And then God did another miracle. He allowed water. And you know we know water represents the word. He allowed water to come out of a donkey's jawbone to give water to an Israelite that was dying of thirst. Okay, A donkey's jawbone. That's going into Deuteronomy 18, 18. I will put my words in his mouth. As it is written, the prophet Muhammad doesn't speak from his own feelings. But what he speaks is a revelation from God. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.